Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. And did I ever tell you about my... My previous career? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but the time I took my clothes off in Tokyo? <laughs> that was a flash in Japan? I saw, saw it going. I was laughing before you got there. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every single week chooses a popular saying to take a shallow but hopefully comedic and once in a while interesting dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but we're also going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation directly on and firmly. <laughs> My name is Jurassic Mark. And I am skinny. <laughs> All the slight modifications. It gets or, you every time, right? Yeah. Like you get into a routine where I say the same thing uh, without thinking. And if I add just something, uh, you, you get the giggle. It's so funny. And in the end... You know, what's the matter if it just like all goes up in in flames, right? It'll be done. Like like, you know, this podcast will happen, poof. and then in the in the in the scheme, in the grand scheme of in things, the grand poof. scheme of things, in in the realm of what's the word in the something of eternity, hmm. the, it'll the, be the blink the light, of an eye, the light of in eternity? light of eternity. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that got that got really deep there for a, a second. Little theology. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's it, 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 it's all good, regardless of how long it lasts. That's what I say. That's my motto, <laughs> right there. Regardless of how long it lasts. Dot 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 dot. Just just. So, Richie, you moment. and Carl Janice. This is no flash in the pan. Ah, flash in the pan. Blink of an eye, leading up to flash in the pan. Little clip from the, the Sopranos. There, it is a flash in the plan. Flash in the plan. A flash, flash in the pan. Flash in the plan. Fashion the plan. <gasps> well, I was thinking of we should fashion the plan. So I, 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 this kind of went in a couple of directions for me, like right off the top of my head. Uh, there's a couple stories that came uh, to mind. Did I ever tell you about my my previous career? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but the time I took my clothes off in Tokyo, <laughs> that was a flash in Japan. I saw saw it going. I was laughing before you got there. <laughs> <laughs> which is way better than my other joke I was working on, which is which has a World War II reference <laughs> that, that also is a flash in Japan. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's a little Hiroshima oh, joke. A, I know it's a little got, more got a little, dark. Got a little, got a little Nagasaki there wow. for a minute. That was a flash in Japan. <laughs> so <laughs> for I, just a so split I second, to go with exhibitionism instead <laughs> yeah, of uh, instead, better, instead of, of pe people being set on fire. Yeah, yeah. I uh, just for a split second, I'm like, you've been in Japan. <laughs> Have you been to Japan? No. Oh, okay. No. I'm like, I feel like I would have known that about you. Yeah, you would have. Yeah. I, I, would, I would have definitely brought that up by now. But anyways, that was uh, that was a little, uh, little exhibitionist humor. <laughs> Perfect. Flash in the pan does have a meaning. Flash in Japan. A flash in Japan has a different meaning. Uh, a person or thing whose sudden but brief success is not repeated or repeatable. I actually jotted down three different meanings. They're very similar, but that was the first one. The second one is something that happened only once or for a short time and was not repeated. And the last one was something that is interesting only for a short time. And that's my favorite one. Interesting just for... Interesting just for a short time. Right. Flash in the pan. Or... And it could be related to like a uh, sporting thing where it's like you had a really strong beginning. It's oh. like, yeah, or, or something where there was just a, a, a moment of greatness. It was right. just a flash in the pen. Yeah. My, my, my immediate thoughts went to uh, one hit wonders. There you go. So I looked up the one eaters. hit. Yeah. Uh, I looked up one hit wonders and uh, try to keep your eyes away from my screen. All right. I want to see if you can guess. Um, let me let me uh, make this bigger. What's well, gonna me. be tricky? To guessing band names for one-hit wonders. That's what I mean. The, that like, movie, the 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 wonders. Yeah, but or no, what's it called? That thing you do. That thing you do. But they're often uh, so the band name is the wonders. But they're when they're introduced because of one was spelled O N E. Yeah, and so it was wonder. Exactly. So it's like and up next the Oneaters. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Okay, so I'm going to give you just a clip of a song. I'm going to keep them super short to avoid any sort of uh, copyright infringement. Copyright All infringement. Right. Let's, but uh, let's, let's go with this one. You'll know this song. Perhaps I want you to are, tell me. You'll probably you'll know the me, name of the song. You'll know the song. But what's the artist? Ready? Uh, we'll get our legitimate children in on this too. See if you can uh, see if you can beat if me. You can beat Skinny to the punch. Los Lobos. Los. Oh, that's really close. Was that Los Del Rio? Oh. So something it's all yeah no it's all, i'm, it's I'm all impressed that, to me <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed you got uh lost at all oh i lost my spot here i lost del real my spot here okay get ready 
Um, I'm gonna have to be tricky and find my spots here in the song, so we'll have to like stall. That's fine. No, I don't mind stalling a little long. Okay, here we go. So I'm just stalling along right now. <laughs> Staller. If I had a staller for every time I had to stall. That's funny. Oh, I know the song. Yeah. I know the song. What's the song called? Tainted Love. Correct. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I don't know don't know who did it though. Exactly. Isn't that funny? Yeah, you could everybody prob- knows that you song. You could probably sing I every lyric of that song. The way you tease. <laughs> <laughs> bow, bow. Anyway, that one hit wonder is uh soft cell. Yeah. Awesome. C E L L. Right. Not like a soft cell like Like ice cream. <laughs> soft cell ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you just a couple more. I've got a whole list of them. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are fun. Okay. I like fun things. I, I wonder how many people are screaming when you don't quite get it. You're like, oh, oh, it's, oh uh, nah. Comment in. Oh. Okay. It's come on, Eileen. I've not even given you lyrics because you got the name of the song. Come yeah. on, Eileen. <laughs> That's why I have no idea who did That's it. That's so funny. That one I thought you might have a chance. I even think we've I think we've even talked about it on, on here before. So that song is by Dexie's Midnight Runners. Sure. I, awesome. You need to get I, I wish my, my brother in law he slays at this kind of stuff. Oh yeah. And because of the era that you chose, I chose the word slays. So, so I didn't <laughs> I didn't choose the era of these <laughs> songs. This is I went in one hit wonder, top one hundred, one hit wonders. And uh, that 80s, was fun to say 80s. right there. Top 100 one, one hit wonders. Top 100 one hit wonders. One hit on eaters. On nice. eaters. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. I can maybe get a song name. I am too sexy for Right side Fred. Love. Oh, yeah. That was quick, man. Wow, okay. All right. <clears throat> so we have to get into the 90s for you to get these. Yeah. Is that it? No. <laughs> just, just pure, blind, dumb luck. All right, how about this one? All right, here we go. Come on, feel the noise. Goes out. Is it, it, oh, is it Tony Basil? Oh, nice, very nice. Yeah, that's early '80s, I think. Uh, 20, oh, yeah, that had a "We're not going to take it" vibe to it. I know. After you said it, I'm like, oh yeah, we should. Uh, there should be a mashup, <laughs> a mashup of those. <laughs> I bet you there is a Monday mashup, on, like Fox Monday mashup or whatever. There has to be. Somebody's done it. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me line this one up. You'll for sure know this one, but this is one. Even when I saw the name, I'm like, hmm. wouldn't have known. Hit me. Fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. I, I mean, fighting. I thought the Bee Gees did it, but. No. This is uh, the classic song, Kung Fu Fighting, by. <gasps> Just give me the first word. I'll give you his initials CD. CD. Nah, I got no. I want to say Jack Black, because that's how no. I know this song. What was, what was that movie? Uh, Kung Fu Panda. Okay. Jack Black is singing in the background of that with CeeLo Green, I think. That's CG. No, yeah, I got nothing on this one as far as uh, the... His name, which <laughs> may surprise you, is Carl Douglas. Oh. <laughs> yep. You wouldn't you hear it. You're like... Wasn't getting that one. No. A guy named Carl Douglas did that song? <laughs> it's too boring. It doesn't sound right. Okay, let me give you this one. I know we're wasting a lot of time. This is fun. <laughs> Uh, okay. This one, uh, you might know the cover of this one better than the original, but I'm giving you the original. Oh, the oh of sky. course. It's Norman Greenbaum from, it's in the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Oh, wow, that's it, Norman Greenbaum. Okay, last one, last one. All then right. We'll, then we'll move on. Come on, illegitimate children. Take, I, take me I, on I, out there. I wish we should have gone live today. Take on me somehow gone live well, we could do a live event maybe for our hundred should that's a good idea maybe that sounds like a good one a good Christmas live fun. like in person live or no, like live, live stream, like we'll stream live stream while we're recording yeah, yeah, yeah. i like that idea because then then we could see if they're if they're actually beating you to this or not okay last one i used to love this song i have no idea what it's about so uh, if anybody does and it's bad i'm sorry um, I got no idea, man. It's like the worst name for a group ever. Musical Youth. No, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't getting it. Thanks for playing. That was fun. I was like, Good, is, glad to be here. Is there see, any parting gifts or anything? <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure you have an ice cream sandwich on your that's way out. That's fun. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so Flash in the Pan, One Hit Wonders, kind of the same thing. Like, there's a moment where you're like, these guys, you know what? I think about One Hit Wonders, and I think about that moment when they're huge. And they're, like, what must be, I used to be in music. And if I had had any of these, just a single moment, you'd be like, we've made it. This is it. Like, number one song in the universe. And then, boom, gone. There was that film where, uh, in England... Uh, the, it's the English guy who has a one hit wonder or his dad does and they're living off that royalty money uh, it's the it's just uh, the Grant Hughes one yeah Grant Hughes <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, some Christmas song that they're, kind, they're still living off of like the royalties Wham. They, they, they kind of have a duo that's funny I can't think of but the name of the movie Drew Barrymore anyway having those, those those moments where something crazy insane happens and they often happen all in a flash yeah and then but it's the disappearance that's fascinating like can you imagine thinking you've made it you've got a number one song in the world let's think of carl douglas Vince. <laughs> carl douglas, although there he is. most of these one hit wonders are are doing just fine off of their one hit yeah they're raking if in it's that. still playing oh i don't know if i've told this story on air on our on our show here but so when I was in music, we had a booking agent. This is pre-internet, so it was kind of funny. Like Our booking agent was a guy in Ontario, which is the other side of the country practically from where we are, but it was all phone call. We never like we didn't meet him for probably a couple of years, and then we finally met him. And this one time, he's like, hey, you're in my neck of the woods. We're booking flights weekly with the guy. And uh, he's like, you're in my neck of the woods. Why don't we go grab a bite? I'd love to meet you guys. You've given me a lot of business, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we go and meet him, and we just start chatting, and he goes, yeah, I was in music when I was... Wow, we just had a little collapse of... <laughs> this is... so something fell off the wall. It just... I, was looking I saw the look shoulder. in your face. I'm like, is my head about to cave in? <laughs> no, I was worried it was glass, but nothing shattered. It didn't sound like... Perfect. We'll, take a look at it well, we'll just get... Anyway. And all that happened in a flash. <laughs> That's right. Go have lunch with this guy. His name was Yuri. Okay. Can't remember his last name. Doesn't matter. Yuri, we have lunch with him, and he goes, I was in music, I was in a country band when I was, and we're like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, everybody's got their story of how they that were country in, was Russia. They, yeah. they, they were in a band. And he goes, we used to travel, uh, and he goes, we met up with this uh, young uh, couple of girls who were doing, they, they got briefly signed to Motown, and they were having the hardest time, and we just felt sorry, because we were kind of making a living. Nobody ever heard of us, but we were surviving, and so... We actually uh, gave them some money to con continue on because we thought they were so great from our band. He goes, well, actually, me personally. And they wanted to pay back. And I said, no, no. And he goes, honestly, I thought I was making a joke. I said, just give me the rights to one or two of your songs. And so they did. They're like, these two songs are now yours. He's like, great. Call it even. Call it square. Doesn't care. Years later, it wasn't immediate. The song Mr. Big Stuff becomes mm -hmm. an after the fact Motown hit. So it's in the year he goes just this year it was in Mighty Ducks Sister Act 2 oh, wow. and a Burger King commercial. He goes, "I kid you not, this week I got a check for $85,000." <laughs> That's crazy. And that song is still popping up in movies Why all the time. Why are we writing music? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he didn't even I can write I'm lyrics? like, "Do you feel bad when you didn't like even intend you know what i mean like he he thought he was just throwing them a bone like whatever yeah. give me the rights to your song and then one one of them the other one's it a flop sounds like some terrible like devil just give me the rights to your song <laughs> eighty five thousand dollars that was wow. that one year it, that, that is a wild amount of money for, i know for just thank you uh, money. anyway flash in the pan that's a one-hit wonder uh i couldn't even tell you what the group is i can't remember but he knows because he gets wow. their money. We'll have to work backwards from the song. I, I was thinking of a a flash in the pan, an actual flash in the pan story. Um, for we we're doing pyrotechnics at where our, our workplace, your former workplace, my current workplace. We're doing yes. pyrotechnics, and part of it was that there was a gunpowder effect that for this one prop, and we stopped using it um and over the years and i ended up having just this little uh, metal container of gunpowder in my office for years in my office drawer just of gunpowder it's of course. like yeah of course who who doesn't have gunpowder well drawer? if they know your workplace they know it makes sense but it, it sounds weird to say it out loud. <laughs> it, it, it does and so i was with my intern i'm like I'm, let's just get rid of this and i'm like i'm gonna write my name in gunpowder like they do on like the cartoons and it's gonna yeah. 
house and it's going to be this like what in the parking lot or yeah, in so your office no we're going to go to the parking lot i'm going to write my name so i'm writing the big vince and gum powder yep. and we're going to watch it go it's going to be awesome okay well i get my name all written and then like i'm leaned over it to light it well gunpowder in reality doesn't do instant. like in the movies in an instant it's poof. and so it's like going down to light and the flame is touching it poof. and it singed <laughs> off my like eyebrows my eye my eyelashes torch my face and then I had to perform a wedding three days later. No, and I look like a, like some sort of Freddy Krueger came out, came out of Elm Street. <laughs> no eyebrows. Uh, it's like it was just that singed like <laughs> thing. It was terrible, but yeah, that was great. That was a flash in the pan. Did pad. you see that uh, video, viral video going around right now of the guy uh, pouring gasoline down a gopher hole in his backyard? No. This and, is my other story, but continue. Oh, go ahead, then. If you've got real life. Well, ours wasn't so, like, we were teenagers, and it was like, we heard about this gasoline. Uh, not in the, We poured it across a, a, a rock garden. And so it's like... Real, like, just automobile fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Like gasoline, kids. Okay. Gas onto the rock garden, and it's going to be cool, because the gas is going to spread everywhere, and the vapors are going to sit above it, and it's going to woof. And so we light it, and it's like, woof, and it's like, oh, that's cool. And little did we know that in that all in that woof, it actually set the 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 bamboo that was around the edge on fire. Okay. And so it was like, woof, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Crackle, crackle, crackle. It's like, what's what is the crackle, crackle, smoke, smoke? Woof. The bamboo starts going up, and so we're just kids. This and is we're like dumb. living bamboo, like yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, it was that you know that white bamboo it's like it's white floofy like the tail of a dog oh is that bamboo i know exactly what you're talking about and so we just did what kids do when stuff is on fire you jump right onto it and try and stomp it out. i thought you were gonna say you ran away (laughs) no that's what actually kids do stupid kids jump right on top of it just burnt all the hair off our legs and just stamping it out and his dad comes out with the like the hose and like you dumbers that was his you dumbers (laughs) so these flash in the pan stories are, uh, you know, one minute everything is just normal, and the next thing, oof, oof. yeah, yeah, and that's pretty real. You you have a surprising, no, not surprising, but a number of fire related, yeah, whoops. whoops. If I, I was I'm bottle hair, rockets I'm on the patio, breath the bamboo away from being in jail lot. as a youth. Yeah, on I remember one on stage. We'll save that for another podcast. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was setting a church on fire. But then you kind of mastered it. I remember me popping over to your house, and you're like, check out this thing I made. You, like, I was watching the movie uh, Backflash. Backflash? Backdraft. <laughs> and you so had this stupid. tornado machine. Yeah. I, I've. What do you call I don't know what you call it. It was a fire tornado was machine a you made. To- a wind tornado. With fire. Yeah. Yeah. But and I, I remember here. going, what are you using that for? I don't know. So many things start <laughs> off with, I saw it on a movie, <laughs> and they end poorly. So to wrap up, I, I said, have you seen the video of the guy pouring gasoline down a gopher hole? And then he's tossing matches at it, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's a small backyard. Like, it's maybe <laughs> oh, 20 no. by 20. And then he's got another little gated part for his dogs. And his dogs are coming in and out. And you can tell he's thinking he's just going to send a flamethrower through the tunnels that the gophers made. Well, finally, you can see him toss one, and instead of every other time, he lit a new match right away. You could tell he missed or it went out. This time he tossed it, and he just stands there. And his whole yard, just in one boom, just jumps three feet and lands again, like cracked all the way across his grass. His dogs take off. I'm like, it's amazing he didn't kill his dogs. I'll, I'll show you after. Maybe sure. I should post it on, on Instagram. Yeah, for throw it on the Instagram for people to look at. But yeah, it's like he did not. You could just see the look in his face. I didn't know that was going to happen. That. Flash in the pan. How much is this going to cost me now? Well, you know what? Maybe we should get into it. A lot of rambling on different flashes. Oh my goodness, we haven't even gotten to where this came from. No, here we go. Let's let's do it. Said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No No one one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. Boom, boom, boom. You know, that's a song that is not a flash in the pan. No, that's We tried to make it a flash in the pan and we got reprimanded. Bring it back. 
Bring it back by the the name that will never be forgotten. When this makes the top 100 one-hit wonders, Dobby Ravies. Dobby Ravies. Right at the top, top up the there list. with uh, Los Del Rio. <laughs> <laughs> right said Fred. All right. Well, there is reason to believe that this phrase derives from the California gold rush mm. of the 19th century. Prospectors who panned for gold supposedly be- got excited when they saw something glint or flash in their pan, only to have their hopes dashed when it proved not to be gold, but a mere flash in the pan. Could be fool's gold or just light glinting off of the water. So I, I got to say, like, I never research these, right? Okay. Like, I just like throw that in, check for initial scan of something interesting. So I'm just dumbfounded every time you speak about these things. <laughs> it's so interesting. Right? Fool's gold flash in the pan. It makes so much sense. Yeah. Have you ever panned for gold? For oh, any, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For fun, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, No, no, no. For life, life living it. <laughs> Livelihood. That's how I did it. Yeah. You just got to go. Just go do it. Yes. Uh, well, Fort Langley. Yeah. Where, so where around are, North thing. America, there's different forts that are now just historical but, but the, sites. The but the big but. one where I did it was Barkerville. Oh, which is like the probably the largest BC gold rush area. Okay, arguably. So, anyways, and so we panned for gold in Barkerville. It's a a historic kind of ghost town now. That's just a tourist attraction, right? That's town size. So it's it's they set it up so that you're going to find something, but it's all fake kind of thing. Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's so Fort like, Langley too. Here's but your much satchel, smaller. Here's your satchel, and you're going to find like five little flex or something yeah that yeah. you got to put back because they had to spray paint those <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they're even real or fool's I, gold or whatever i but. panned for gold at fort langley like you brought up i also panned for gold when i was 10 years old at knott's berry farm interesting and they had you know it's in yeah, the amusement yeah. park so it's all fake blah 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 but uh you pan for gold and then whenever you find they bottle up for you and it was real gold but it's like microscopic flex like i remember having almost like a t- test tube size like glitter <laughs> yeah and it's just like if you what, rattle it around one piece you of see glitter something floating in there but uh yeah still fun it was super fun yeah it's panning for gold so that's that's uh, a very plausible and attractive notion but red yep oh balder dash i would buy i would that, that's you'd a bite, good one you'd bite yeah I'd bite um, and one of the reasons that this one is popular is because it ties in with another phrase, which we haven't done before, but and and we'll we'll not get into it right now. But is uh, when you show disappointment by saying it didn't pan out. Mm-hmm. Probably comes from that. Makes sense. So didn't look, pan out. We'll look deeper into that some other time. But that is not where it came from. And it's funny that you brought up Fort Langley because I visited Fort Langley for a presentation once with, um, like, you know, sometimes you can just go visit, do a little walkthrough and grab some barbecue after or whatever. Sure. This time we actually went on a little tour and experienced everything. I think I was with one of my kids' classes or something. Anyway, this guy gets out there and I learned what flash in the pan means from this little tour. And so I was curious as I was researching this week, is what I learned there accurate? And it is accurate. So flintlock muskets. They used to have small pans right at the trigger there, they uh, above the trigger, had small pans to hold charges of gunpowder and an attempt to fire the musket in which the gunpowder would flare up and light, but not enough that the bullet wasn't fired from the musket was a flash in the pan. So there was indeed, the gunpowder did what it was supposed to, but not enough to fire a bullet. So there was a flash in the pan and that's it, which is a way better uh, and true and accurate yes. description of what we still currently use it for because yeah oh mm-hmm. yeah so that was a flash pan that's where oh. it comes that is the entire origins the history the everything that's it that is it oh. so the term has been used ever since then yeah I know right <laughs> like sometimes we have super interesting oranges no, that's interesting oranges. I, was, I was playing for you no know. but it kind of is it's like uh, uh, it, it's super interesting it and, is and now uh, done yeah flash in the pan flash in the pan it's a, often uh, great things happen like that. Like all of a the sudden, there's just one monumental moment that c- captures an event. That's just the one p- pivotal, pivotal thing. Yeah, we were at a youth group uh, thing by the, the lake, and this guy brought a potato gun. Oh yeah, that he a homemade pop deal. can kind of thing, or no, like a little more skookum. Yep, I want to say it was about five feet long. Uh, it was like a bazooka. PVC piping? Yep, or, yep, okay. Yep. PVC pipe with a barbecue igniter. Yep. The whole deal. I guess he saw the, the blueprints online. 
Anyways, we had no potatoes, but we there was an apple tree at the park, and it had, some apples had fallen off of off of the the tree, and he, he gets it all in and wedged out, and we've been goofing around how far you could you know shoot it in the air and shoot it at this and shoot it at that. <laughs> this one kid was getting on his nerves. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. No man, it's like don't want to mess this thing up. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> it's so. Uh, uh, I'll buy the rights <laughs> to your song. At some point, the, the kid, I don't know, he's 100 yards away, like far the away. The kid is? or The kid who was bugging him. Yeah. And he was like, shoot me with it, shoot me with it. And so he's like, gladly, because the kid had been annoying him. And so he gets it in, gets it all charged up. This, th- this potato or apple piece that came out of it was like a guided missile. I could see it moving through the With air the kid. <laughs> and so as he do- it was like one of those like dodge left right and you could see the apple like moving in the air Boom, just totally exploded on the kid hit yeah, him hit him like in the chest or it's like in the back oh yeah <laughs> You shot in the back with an apple. Uh, I guess that distance, and, but still. I can't remember another thing about that camp outside of that, <laughs> outside of that flash in the pan. Yeah, it was like that one boom. Like you'll never believe this aspect of it. It's so crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, the was and the kid hurt. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you walk off. Of, what did you say? I got hit by an apple. <laughs> Your parents would never believe that. So this is super unrelated, but it does include apples and pans. Okay. We have an apple tree in our backyard. Yeah. And uh, I walked outside there. So yesterday, it must have been two days ago. And I said, man, those apples, those are like real apples. Like should we should pick, one. we should go yeah. do something with this. And so my son and his girlfriend were over like, let's make apple pie. This is awesome. And so we just Google yes. uh, apple recipe and we, we went with, uh, now I'm, I'm not a drinker, but there was a single bottle um, from a recipe a little over a year ago mm-hmm. of bourbon in our cupboard. Okay. And so we're like, uh, is there a, a bourbon apple pie recipe? Sure. And so we find one. And fast forward, we uh, we uh, we made this apple pie. Everybody is super excited and mind-blowing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Out of was, apples off the back tree? Yeah. All same day, got so, it completed. All See, that kind of stuff that's just like it's a spurt all of one in a moment, boom. Yeah. That's the flash in the pan. Exactly. It, probably unreplicatable, but... Hey, man, we're heading into the home stretch here. Let's finish off with okay, some... Well, let me uh, give you this Sorry, first. guys. I promised Peggy I wouldn't say anything. Who would have thought Hank would put some flash in the pan wipe before 30 years of friendship? Yeah. <laughs> right? The flash in the pan Okay, wipe. well, there's a game we like to play called Riddlink, and it's a game that is a two-part trivia-based question and requires a two-part but overlapping answer, overlapping by sound or syllable or word. And so, for example, our last episode, uh, we ended it up, left it for all you guys to guess on. We had several correct guesses. Was here's a story of a girl named Maureen McCormick who was busy playing this iconic role, and then we got rid of her. Did you figure that out? Uh, well, it's it's Marsha Brady. Yeah. And then we got rid of her. Eighty Marsha Brady six. That's it. Very nice. All right. So I've got a couple for today. Okay. Me too. Let me get going first. Okay. The sudden but brief success. Of Guillermo, of Guillermo del Toro's 2006 dark fantasy film. Um, oh, um, a flash in the pan's labyrinth. That's the one. Oh man, I had to rack my brain Fantastic. for that title. Make sure uh, our illegitimate children, you're jumping in on these so that you can have uh, it, it beat us to the punch. We love hearing about that. You got one for me? Uh, yes. Uh, how about this one? A short-lived success for COVID-19. <laughs> Flash in the pandemic? <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Okay. L- little current events in there? Yeah, right? Go ahead. All right, all right. I got another one here. The Rolling Stones say it's all right now. In fact, it's a gas. To have sudden but brief success. Ah, uh, is it is it jump jumping jack flash in the pan yeah jumping jack flash in the pan wow Very that was nice. tricky well you tongue pulled twister those, you pulled some oldies there. i got one more do not answer it we'll let anybody who's listening give a shot uh, right. tell them how they can get a hold of us our illegitimate children can reach us uh, on instagram at the dot village dot idiom email the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's facebook youtube or twitter at three minutes gone perfect here it is when you attempt to fire Oh, wait. I forgot. I have to be ready for this. Here we go. Sound clip. Yeah. When you attempt to fire your musket, but a bullet doesn't leave the barrel, sings this song. 
I'm on. I'm on, baby. You got it. Well, it's fun uh, putting all uh, this together. Some good material today. Appreciate that. Uh, hope you enjoyed listening to it. I am Skinny. I am Jurassic Flint Lockmark. <laughs> These <laughs> are the Village Idioms. Our love was just a flash in the past. That's three minutes gone.